Vsauce, Kevin here, and this penny brick contains a strictly monotonically increasing sequence to detect fraud that depends in part on an eight-year-old genius in the 1700s and how loaded with useless knowledge your brain is. It also contains 50 rolls of 50 American pennies, each of which weighs two and a half grams and is composed of 97.5% zinc and 2.5% copper. Here's the problem. One of these 50 rolls is full of fakes. Which one of you is looking a little sus? Vicious. The fake one could be anywhere. The only thing I know is that the counterfeit pennies are half a gram lighter than real pennies. That's too light though to feel out by hand, so I've got to measure them. How? I could measure all 50 rolls one by one until I found the fakes. Every roll should be 125 grams for the pennies plus three grams for the wrapper. It'll work, but it could take up to 50 measurements. The weird thing is there's actually an elegant way to measure just once. Take one single measurement to find out exactly which stack is phony. That solution is not obvious, so let's start with the obvious. You know you can speed up measuring by, say, breaking the 50 stacks into five groups of 10. Measure the five groups and one will be light. Measure the 10 stacks in that group until you find the fake. If you're super lucky, 20% chance you get the right group on the first try. 10% chance it's the right stack. There's a 2% chance you could do this in just two measurements, but it could take 15. There's a 100% chance it'll work, and you know that because it's in your system one. You've stored so many patterns and processes in the dual process model of your brain. System one thinking is the automatic intuition you build up with knowledge and experience. It's what your brain knows before you even know you know. System two is the slower, calculated thought you apply it with. Here's a question. Which system do you need to measure 50 stacks of pennies just once and be guaranteed to find the imposter? Both. You need both. First, I gotta find out what 50 stacks of pennies should weigh. 2.5 grams times 50 squared equals 6,250 grams, or 6.25 kilograms. If fake pennies are half a gram short, a stack of 50 will be 25 grams too light. Cool. Now what? Now you need to know patterns. You need to know sequences. Maybe you got it from studying convergent and divergent series. Maybe it was Euler. Maybe it was calculus. Maybe it was projected investment growth or growing student loan debt. But somehow the long arrangement of numbers and the implications of those sequences and series need to be somewhere in your system one. Like one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus it's infinite. And with the Ramanujan summation that adds up to negative one over 12. But that's another video, not this one. And we're not adding infinitely. We're only going to 50. And that summation is so simple that even an eight-year-old can do it. Because literally an eight-year-old Carl Gauss discovered the method. Carl Gauss is one of history's greatest mathematicians. And as a child, he realized that any series of adding consecutive numbers could be done by taking the whole set of numbers and dividing it by two, then multiplying that result by the first plus the last number. So one through 50, 50 divided by two times one plus 50, or 25 times 51 equals 1,275. Thanks, eight-year-old Carl. When I was eight years old, I was listening to Nirvana's Nevermind on cassette, begging my mom for a Sega Genesis. Anyway, if we treat the 50 stacks as potential consecutive numbers and take one penny from the first stack, two pennies from the second stack, three pennies from the third stack, and so on, all the way to the 50th stack, our consecutive penny stack series will give us 1,275 total pennies. 
At two and a half grams each minus the wrappers, that's 3,187 and a half grams. When we take one single weight measurement of our Divergent Series inspired Gaussian child genius pennies, it will be short by a certain number of grams. We'll know exactly how many pennies of the 1,275 are fakes, because if it's short seven grams, 14 fake pennies, 19 grams, 38 fakes. And since we took the number of pennies corresponding to the number of stacks, like taking 13 pennies from stack number 13, however many fake pennies we have in the group actually tell us which stack the fakes came out of. So let's find out which of my stacks is the fake. None. None. None of these pennies are actually fake. I, I, I got them, I got them from the bank. I just, I really wanted to visualize this problem because it changed my mind about how thinking functions. We, we just do not do this stuff every day. To stumble on the right process here, you probably had to have done some real thought about consecutive numbers and number series in the past. If, if that's not in your system one, then system two doesn't have a lot to work with. You could just, I guess, sort of figure it out if you'd never worked with a number series before. If your name is Carl Gauss, the, the rest of us need to know things, a lot of things, and there's no guarantee that what's in your system one will ever be useful because it just isn't until it is. Will you need to know specifically how to reveal a roll of counterfeit coins in a single measurement? Probably not, but what problem will you need to solve using the number patterns, mathematical processes, and even riddle answers that you've acquired over a lifetime. Without a system one loaded with math and science, Archimedes gets in the bathtub, sees the displacement of water correlating with his body, and, I don't know, washes his smelly armpits. There would have been nothing for system two to activate. There's no way to know how you'll put information and patterns and relationships and knowledge together to solve a very real problem in your future. But the more information you pack into your system one, the more likely it is that your system two will get the job done. And as always, I have so many pennies to roll. Thanks for watching.